biggest rolling campaign for any wildlife protection cause in Europe in decades. We're here again, just over two years since we last marched through this town because the badger colour has not gone away. The threat to our badgers, if anything, is increasing. We're now faced with an extension of this mad policy that has no scientific validity, that's terribly cruel, and has cost so far over £23 million, around £6,500 per badger killed. So we're really here now to re-engage with the people of Brighton, to wake the politicians up to the fact that we've not gone away. We remain very angry. We're going to continue to fight this terrible policy in towns and cities across this country. Today we're going to have hundreds of people with us. It's a beautiful day. We're going to get lots of people through the city centre listening to what we have to say, why it is that we should stand up for our wildlife, not allow industry and political short-term interests to destroy it. Is that working okay yet? Yeah, yeah, go on. You get Thank you very action. much. Brighton Beach in the sunshine. Thank you very much for coming. It's great to see so many people here. Uh, my name is Mark, Mark Jones. I'm a vet. I work for the Born Free Foundation. Um, I'd just like to thank the organisers, uh, Sussex Wildlife Trust, Badger Trust, for organising this amazing event. I believe this is the 33rd march against uh, this badger cull. Uh, so we're certainly making our voices heard and making sure that the government and the National Farmers Union don't forget that most sensible law-abiding people are completely against this travesty. I think that's as loud as it gets. Is that any better? Okay. I've been involved in this issue for a long time, campaigning on this issue. I've also been out with the Wounded Badger Patrols in Gloucestershire over the past two or three years. As the, the lady who spoke earlier said, those, uh, those um, patrols, those local groups are really, really amazing. So do get down there and support them if you possibly can. Now, as many of you will know, Born Free Foundation, the organisation I work for, was founded by the actress Virginia McKenna and her husband. And they starred in the film Born Free, which was released 50 years ago this year. It's a big year for our charity. Virginia would have loved to have been here today. Unfortunately, she can't, but she feels passionately about this issue. And she's passionately opposed to this badger cull. And she's asked me to read a short statement, which I'll, I'll do just now. So this is from Virgi Virginia McKenna. Not only does there seem to be no logic in possibly extending the badger cull to Sussex or any other county for that matter, but this plan also means the decision makers have disregarded the suffering caused to the badgers by the culling methods used. Little by little, wild creatures are being eliminated from nature. It would seem that the authorities never consider what wild animals contribute to the balance of the natural world. They waste thousands, millions of pounds on this slaughter as if there was no alternative to defeat the transmission of TB to cattle. Of course, there is an alternative, and one of the alternatives is vaccination. The choice is life for all, not death. That's from Virginia McKenna, and she would have loved to have been here today with us. Ladies and gents, these badger cars have been going on now for three years in Gloucestershire and Somerset. Dorset, a zone in Dorset was added last year. Almost 4,000 badgers have been killed under licence to date, almost none of which have been tested for bovine TB, the overwhelming majority of who were perfectly healthy and posed no risk to anyone or anything. Now, in spite of this, this year, 29 new applications for culling licences in the west and southwest of England, covering an area of about 10,000 square kilometres. That's, that's roughly the size of Yorkshire, to give, you, to give you, that's our largest county, to give you an idea, uh, are being considered by Natural England, the, the government's licensing authority. And we could easily see these culls being extended across nine counties this year. Now East Sussex isn't at the moment one of the counties uh, for which applications have been for put forward, but it is a high risk area for bovine TB. So you could see these badger culls coming to the woods and fields around here in the near future. And this policy could see 130,000 or more badgers killed over the next coming years. 
and the population across west and southwest of England reduced by a half. They're not my estimates, they're Natural England estimates, the government's own licensing body. Now, no one denies, least of all me, that bovine TB is a big issue for farmers. In 200, uh, 2014, 33,000 cattle were slaughtered prematurely as a result of bovine TB, and the controlling the disease has cost about £500 million to the taxpayer over the last 10 years. And an outbreak costs an individual farmer thousands of pounds, notwithstanding all the other impacts on his business and the emotional impacts and so on and so on. Most of these costs are associated not with the effects of the disease itself, but they're associated with how we go about trying to control it. This situation has come about not because of badgers, as many in the government and the National Farmers Union would have you believe, but because of inadequate controls and poor industry practices over many years. Just because the costs of cattle TB are high is not an excuse for laying the blame on innocent wild animals. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in trying to defend this policy, the government and the National Farmers Union will say you can't get TB under control without dealing with the reservoir in badgers. This is not true. The only real piece of science designed to look at the impact of killing badgers on TB was the so-called randomised badger culling trial. That took place over a period of 10 years, cost £50 million, and it cost 11,000 badgers their lives. And the conclusion of the scientists who set up and, and evaluated that trial was that badger culling can make no meaningful contribution to the control of TB in cattle in Britain. The government and the NFU will say no country has controlled TB successfully without dealing with the reservoir in wildlife. That's simply not true. Here in the UK, we got bovine TB under control in the late 1950s and early 1960s through strict controls over cattle trade, 10 years before we even knew badgers could get the disease at all. They will say shooting badgers is a humane way of killing them, because it's no different from shooting other kinds of wildlife. Well, that's absolutely not true. After the first year of these culls in Gloucestershire and Somerset, the government's own appointed independent expert panel found that up to a quarter of the badgers that were shot at had taken more than five minutes to die. And the experts concluded that these badgers were therefore at risk of experiencing marked pain. And to imply other wild animals that are shot don't suffer is clearly utterly ridiculous and indefensible. They will say the badger culls are already working. That again is simply not true. Even our chief vet, who's a big supporter of the culls, and I'll come to him in a minute, admits it's impossible to draw any conclusions and there's even some evidence that cattle TB in Dorset, where they culled last autumn for the first time, has been going up since as many scientists predicted it would, if you start disturbing badgers and uh, killing badgers randomly and causing the surviving badgers to roam around uh, in a panic and spread the disease to more of their kin. And let's not forget that illegal badger persecution has increased within and around the cull zones, something the government and the National Farmers Union doesn't seem to be taking very seriously. And they will say, we need to use all the tools in the box. You'll hear this said a lot. What an absurd lot of nonsense. You don't use all the tools in the box. You, do, you use the tools that work. And you use the tools that don't involve the wholesale slaughter of our wildlife. Killing badgers should never be a tool for controlling TB in cattle. The messaging from the government and the National Farmers Union is nothing more and nothing less than nonsense. A lot of folk uh, I speak to are quite here, they're surprised to hear that my profession, my lot, the veterinary profession, has played a big part in the development and promotion of this badger culling policy. Remember, badger culling is supported by individual vets who seem to think they should do whatever their farm clients ask of them. It's supported by the British Veterinary Association, which is heavily influenced by vested interests within the profession and the farming industry. 
and it's supported by our chief government vet and his staff, presumably because their jobs depend on it. Now, I'm often asked why vets, who above all else should be looking out for the welfare of animals, would support the wholesale and unjustified slaughter of badger, badgers. The problem here is that many vets simply don't understand the science behind the control of TB in cattle. Many vets have vested interests, and a lot of vets will also claim that the welfare of badgers and other wild animals is nothing to do with them because these animals aren't directly under their care. Well, let me say this about my profession. Before supporting badger culls, or for that matter, any harmful wildlife interventions, vets and their professional bodies, like the British Veterinary Association, had better be damn sure there will be a substantial and guaranteed benefit. They'd better be damn sure there's no alternative. And they'd better be damn sure the methods that are going to, use, that are going to be used are humane. And they'd better be absolutely confident that there won't be any other consequences for animal welfare, like increased illegal persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, these badger culls fail on all of these counts, and the veterinary profession has no business supporting them. I have to say, the attitude of many of my colleagues in the profession, who seem to think badgers are little more than an expendable, expendable nuisance, has made me ashamed of the profession I worked so hard to join 30 years ago. But there is some hope. This year, the British Veterinary Association has published a new animal welfare strategy. In it, it says vets should put animal welfare advocacy at the forefront of all of their considerations and responsibilities. Funny, I thought that was why people became a vet in the first place, but apparently it's taken until this year for the British Veterinary Association to acknowledge that. And it also calls, um, calls that uh, vets should be advocates for the welfare of all animals, not just those under their immediate care. And I, along with many of my veterinary colleagues who feel the same way as I do, will be calling on the British Veterinary Association to apply, to apply these good principles and reverse its support for these unjustified badger culls. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't just about the 4,000 badgers who have lost their lives for no good reason in the west of England uh, over the past three years. It's not even just about the 130,000 badgers that could be killed over the coming years. It's about the attitudes of our government, our industries, our vets and our society towards our wildlife. Wild animals all over the world are disappearing fast and we're systematically destroying the nature on which ultimately we all depend. In its manifesto, this government stated, and I quote, Our moors and meadows, wildlife and nature, air and water, are a crucial part of our national identity and make our country what it is. So we care about them deeply, want to protect them for everyone and pass them on to future generations. Go and have a look. That's what it said in the Conservative Party manifesto before the last election. All I can say is that the indiscriminate killing of badgers for no good reason isn't much of a way of fulfilling that commitment. Blaming wildlife for the problems we create and licensing the slaughter of tens of thousands of innocent wild animals is just not good enough. And this government and the proponents of this obscene policy need to hear that message loud and clear. So what can we do? Well, you've already made a difference just by being here today, just by coming along and making your voice heard and your opposition to this travesty plain and clear. As was said earlier, if you can, please go down to the culling zones in the west of England this year and take part in those peaceful legal patrols uh, that, go, that take place every night throughout the culling period to try to protect the badgers in those zones from harm. This could be coming to your backyard in a few years' time and you're going to be needing those guys to come over and support you if and when it does. And keep writing to your councillors, MPs, MEPs, the Environment Minister, even the Prime Minister, whoever you can think of, to remind them of just how much public opposition to this policy there is. Let me be absolutely clear, badger culling is unscientific, it's ineffective, it's inhumane, it's entirely unnecessary, and this travesty of a policy must be brought to an end. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.